Fridays, you know what that means, especially too as we get towards the draft, just because it's the off season doesn't mean it's the off season for the nickel package. It rages on every Friday. Five questions, hence the name Nickel Package, Lions Edition here today of the nickel package. Let's get into it. Okay, first question of the Lions nickel package. There's a lot of expectations for this Detroit Lions team this season. They brought in some great pieces in free agency. Hopefully Brad Holmes has another good draft and players building off of their success last year. So is not winning the division a failure for this team this year? Okay, here's here's the other edge of, of the scared not stoked, right? Like I can't I can't sit here and tell you I'm uncomfortable with all this talk and be like, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's an absolute failure if they don't win the division. I gotta be consistent, I guess. I, I By the math, by what people are talking about, probably, I think the people as a, as a whole would say that yes, it would be a failure to them. But for me, I'm, I'm not prepared to go that far. I would say not making the playoffs would be a failure. I, I am comfortable saying that. However, winning the division, that's still a big ask, but I guess it's because I'm scared, not still. Well, you got to look at it, too, is that look at what they did in the division last year, right? They were the best in their division as far as the record was. I still don't think that they're a failure if they don't win the division. I think they're a failure if they don't make the playoffs. And, and as this team goes, I'm almost getting to let we got to win a playoff game you know so if they don't win the division but win a playoff game um and probably because it's the first year off the clock i go as long as they make the playoffs and they're improving i can see that but um no this year they don't need to win the division to not be a failure okay yeah and i could see that too right if they do qualify for the playoffs but don't win the division depending on how it shakes out i mean to expect them to go into Philadelphia or go into San Francisco and say, oh, I expect them to win that football game. Right. That's a that's a big ask. I think the playoffs is, is like we said, we have the clock and stuff like this. Playoffs is uh, determines failure of the season or not. And, and that's fair. I, I think that's fair. I, I think that we're, we're good with that one. But, you know, I, I'm curious to see. Uh, Corey Berry says, not improving the win total would be a failure. And, you know, Right. Not, not, not if it gets you in the playoffs. You know, you go 9-8 and eight again and it gets you in the playoffs this time, I don't have a problem with it. But, I don't. But you you have his, a tough road to schedule. To this point, you'd, you'd expect them at least to win 10 games to make sure they get in the playoffs and not have to worry about what other teams do. Depending on how you sit at 9-8, and eight, though, right? Like yeah. we saw, well, we we saw, saw an exa- last year where Seattle, and you don't want to have that situation where you've cost yourself earlier in the season with a loss and a tie break. There, there you go. Second down. Second down, and I'm, I will say it's a failure. So you are still Those are my scared. expectations is to win the division. What if they don't win the division but win a playoff? Yeah, game? I'd like that. I mean, I'm not going to be mad about it, but it'd still be a little upsetting that they didn't win the division, but I'm definitely definitely take that. Okay. I'd definitely be happy with that. I, I think and I think that's memo. If they win a playoff game, it doesn't it, no one gives an yeah, inch it how even, how it happens. It does not really matter. We just we go wild and that's it. Yeah. I agree with that. All right, next question of the Lions nickel package. Who has more interceptions at the end of the year? Newly acquired Chauncey Gardner-Johnson or Kirby Joseph? The football finds Kirby Joseph, man. Or Kirby Joseph finds the football. I don't know which one it is. I don't care which one it is. When that man is back there, he makes plays. And I just love that Aaron Rodgers' last pass at Lambeau Field. That's why I want him to leave, too, Me by too. the way. I want him to leave Green Bay, A, because of the, the salary cap damage it does to the Packers, mm-hmm. but B, Kirby Joseph. The last pass Aaron Rodgers ever threw in Lambeau Field was intercepted by Kirby Joseph. And if, when, next time he's doing a signing, I want to, I'm getting a picture of that, yeah. and I want it signed, and I want him to say, Aaron Rodgers' last pass at Lambeau. That in quotes awesome. on there. That would be dope. And yeah, I'm getting up, that one. Done. Hit up our boy John Yu and see the next 100%. time he's at the pro sports. 100%. Zone. I'm getting that one. And I, I may get it. I may have, like, Fathead put it on a wall in my house. Yeah. And, and have him sign <laughs> that one. But I'm, I'm going Kirby Joseph, D-Mac. There's just a – the football finds some dudes. Or some dudes find the football. I, I can't agree, explain it. I agree 100%. I think the way that uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson is going to be used sort of as that free – Safety all over the field, but it's gonna allow. I think they're gonna allow open uh, Kirby Joseph up to, to take more risks. You know, we we heard earlier on um, 
Who was the Illinois uh, draft guy who was teammates of Kirby Joseph? Oh, Devin Witherspoon, yeah. Devin, so, like Witherspoon said, right? You say, you know, uh, Joseph's the one guy where they're always talking that he's got his six. That means that he's going to be hovering behind, playing sort of more of the, the free roll to go hawk balls. I think that, that the Detroit Lions, uh, Aaron Glenn, Everybody, they know what they got in Kirby Joseph, and he's probably the guy. He's he, he's our, for lack of a better term, you know, as far as going to the ball, it's, it's what Quandre Diggs does in Dallas. I, I see him in that in that play, and, and you're going to see him maybe get burnt a little bit more from taking chances, but it'll be covered up. Instead of getting burnt, and then a guy going for 20, 25 yards, he's going to get burnt, and somebody's going to be there to make the tackle. So you maybe five yards instead. WoodwardSports.com chat throw Andrew Klingerman doubles down and says Kirby will lead the league in interceptions this year. Book it. That's aggressive. I don't that, hate it. You know what, though? Is that check the odds on that for the beginning because that's not a bad bet be to worth put the spin. a couple mm-hmm. shekels down. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be spin worth it. the spin. It'd yeah. be worth the spin. You know what? Andrew Clearman might be on to something because who who was tied for the league lead in interceptions last season? C.J. Gardner-Johnson. You guys both think that Kirby Joseph will have more than him. So then, i.e., that's where you live hey, then, you know what? Right? Even if I'm wrong, I think that between the two of them, right, combined, is that we're, we're looking at, you know, six, eight picks in the yeah. secondary by those two guys. I thought you were going to say something like I would say. Even if I'm wrong, I'm probably right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, third down. Well, that's right. a fact. I'm never wrong. You know that. Third question of the Lions nickel package. Over under 1,100 rushing yards for David Montgomery. Y- you know what? And I. This is if he obviously if he stays healthy. Yeah, and and I probably value David Montgomery more than most. I'm a big David Montgomery guy. I was, I was altered in the britches a little bit when when I found out that they signed him out of left field. Me like, too. Because I came it, here at like midnight the day they did it, off of a Coonan trip and recorded a reel about it. That reel popped off. Too, reel bro. popped off. Yes. Grind don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> Grind don't stop. No, it doesn't. However, there is no bigger David Montgomery fan in this town than of, than me. Mm-hmm. However, eleven hundies aggressive, and and guys, remember this. This is going to be my other battle cry going throughout the summer. Everyone is way dismissive of DeAndre Swift. He's playing for his bank account. Contract deal. It's yeah. a contract. Don't forget this, guys. He's playing for his contract this year, and it's always been my mantra: fantasy sports, all of it. Who, play, who was a running back that played for their contract last year? Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs. Who was another one? Saquon, Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley. You yeah. see what I... Like, guys just have a tendency. All of a sudden, they're healthy. And all of a sudden, they're really good. Yeah, DeAndre but- Swift is going to have more of an impact than people think that he is. And, you know, Montgomery getting 1,100 yards is too aggressive for me. Yeah, but, you know, you have 17 games. What's the the health? I think, you know, it's right above the aggressive point. But how are you going to use? See, I see DeAndre Swift. They got to keep him. They got to keep him healthy. So you're going to keep him out. You're talking about Josh Jacobs and even Saquon Barker. They run hard. Mm-hmm. They run like David Montgomery, right? So it's a different. I'm going to go over just the fact that, you know, 17 games. He plays 15 of them at 75 yards average. I think he's going to have a couple games where he's going to go 120, 130. And, you know, he's he's one of these guys that he breaks so many tackles in the backfield that he just ends up falling forward all the time. So um, I, I'm going to go over. I'm going to talk myself into probably <laughs> probably more of what Jess B313 is saying here. Montgomery, 1,300 yards combined. How Well, that's combined, but how many, right? Which is more along the lines. You could be right, Neil, but I think he's right around 1,000 or so. If he stays healthy... I think I think he's the consistency. I think that, you're, that DeAndre Swift will be effective, but it'll be used a lot differently than he was. You won't see him running between the tackles that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would go over just for the fact, like, Jamal Williams got 1,000 last year, and he is a much better running back than Jamal Williams. He's had 1,000 all-purpose yards four straight years for the Bears, who have terrible offensive line, have had a terrible offensive line. So I think if he plays more than 14 games this season – He'll be over 1,100. WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Uh, Timothy Short says, Bijan and Montgomery both will go over 1,000 yards next year. (laughs) So, you know, (laughs) there's there's that one out there too. Fourth down. All right, fourth question of the nickel package. 
Can Jared Goff repeat his success from last season? I know it's aggressive to ask for a quarterback to only throw seven interceptions. That's probably not going to happen. That, that is a fantastic year. But can he repeat what he did last year? You know we, where we talked about uh, the season's a success if they win a playoff game? Not necessarily tied to a division or stuff like that. I think if they win a playoff game... Jared Goff is a byproduct of that. To what degree, you know, if you want to peg numbers to it, I, I don't think that Jared Goff as a successful season this year is something that's linear. There's it's, there's not like a passing not. yards number, an interception number. It's wins. It's it, the, he is tied to the team's performance yes. this year. And and I and I will and I will say that for you, Spenmo. Look, you're mm -hmm. you're a Jared Goff truther, self admitted Jared Jared Goff truther. I don't think he can reach the numbers that he reached last year. With that being said, it doesn't matter. His his perception next year will totally be tied to what the team does. That's the nature of the beast with the quarterback spot. Not saying it's wrong, not saying it's right, just saying what is. No, it is. Uh, and and I expect it to be similar. You know, we always talked about it. Yeah, he's probably going to throw more interceptions because he's going to be throwing more balls downfield with with the speed of Williams and even, you know, Marvin Jones coming back and stuff like that. So, um, to me, his success is tied definitely to the team's success. The defense has gotten a lot better, which is going to help out the offense. That's the biggest thing, right? They're fine-tuning this offense with all the weapons that we have, right? And obviously, you're going to have James Williams back um, playing full-time, which adds something else. But defensively, that's the biggest improvement for this offense is their defense. Woodward so, Sports, I, so it's linear. WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Um, what about what about this one, man? This this one is this one's real real aggressive. Goff will win the MVP this year with all the fame the Lions have recently gotten. Mark my words. That's Anthony Patterson. Write that one down. Yeah. Man. Write that one down, Spenmo. Yeah, good luck, Anthony Patterson. <laughs> all right, fifth down. All right, final question. Simple, easy put. Will Dan Campbell win Coach of the Year next year? It's a lot of the golf angle. Lions win a playoff game. The Lions win the division. Yes, he should. Prob he probably will. Depending, you know, Houston comes from nowhere or whatever, mm -hmm. goes 13-3, and three, what are you going to do? Outside of that, if everything is around what we think it will be, then yeah, I think I think I think he will. Yeah, no doubt. And I think you look at Brian Dable and, and the Giants, the similar thing of what what he's done. And I think this team that the Lions have and Dan Campbell this year is better than that team last year. So if they have success, everybody has success. Uh, people talking golf, forty-one touchdowns, three picks. Yeah. <laughs> Remember last year when it was fifty-five hundred yards? Yeah, fifty and what they were. 14 and 2 or whatever, whatever the chat. So you expect man. Jared Goff to have the greatest touchdown to interception ratio in NFL history. Yeah. <laughs> 41 <laughs> touchdowns, 3. What if, if real quick Spemo, I know I know we're late for the break. Real quick. Yeah. What if, what if he did do if that? If he goes for 41 touchdowns and 3 intercept interceptions, I would shave my head bald. <laughs> Because that means the Lions win multiple playoff games. But you would leave the mustache. But I would leave the mustache. And the goatee. And the goatee. And I already have the bet. We ran it back. The Dan Campbell face tattoo. On your inner thigh? On my, just, right, just on my thigh. Oh, not inner right. thigh. If they win the division. I like how, d do you hear how quick he was? to? No, no, just on my just, thigh. Just regular thigh. No, <laughs> not the inner thigh. It's not the inner thigh? No, just just right on the thigh. I for, I for sure thought I... I'm going to have to go back on... Uh, the rewinds and check. I thought you said inner thigh one time. I didn't. You sure you didn't? I'm sure I did not.